Alrighty, hello again. This time you actually get to see me on video. So, and I'd like to apologize. I am a little congested, so if there's any sniffling, I do apologize. Also, I, I'm going to be primarily looking at my monitors, so I apologize if it's a little weird that I'm not staring directly at the camera. So, what I wanted to talk about today is I wanted to talk about health at every size. If you've been paying attention to the fat acceptance movement, you have no doubt um, heard this term before. Now, I was confused by that term. It wasn't clear to me what the hell people meant when they said health at, at every size. So I went on to Instagram and I asked. And that led me to somebody giving me a couple of names, which I looked up. And that led to that led to a study. Let me go ahead and pull that up. So this study here, Weight Science, Evaluating the Evidence for a Paradigm Shift. And let me go ahead and just read you the, uh, the abstract of the study. Current guidelines recommend that overweight and obese individuals lose weight through engaging in lifestyle modification involving diet, exercise, and other behavior change. This approach reliably influences short-term weight loss, but the majority of individuals are unable to maintain weight loss over the long term and do not achieve the putative benefits of improved morbidity and mortality. Concern has arisen that this weight focus is not only ineffective at producing thinner, healthier bodies, but may also have unintended consequences contributing to food and body preoccupation, repeated cycles of weight loss and regain, distraction from other personal health goals, and wider health detriments, reduced self-esteem, eating disorders, other health decrement, and weight stigmatization and discrimination. This concern has drawn increased attention to the ethical implications of recommending treatment that may be ineffective or damaging, a growing transdisciplinary movement called Health at Every Size, H-A-E-S, I just say Haze, challenges the value of promoting weight loss and dieting behavior and argues for a shift in focus to weight-neutral outcomes. Randomized controlled clinical trials indicate that a Hayes approach is associated with statistically and clinically relevant improvements in physiological measures, e.g. blood pressure, blood lipids, health behaviors, e.g. eating and activity habits, dietary quality, and psychosocial outcomes such as self-esteem and body image, and that Hayes achieves these outcomes more successfully than weight loss treatments and without the contraindications associated with a weight focus. This paper evaluates the evidence and rationale that justifies shifting the healthcare paradigm from a conventional weight focus to haze. So this paper uh, is a paper by Linda Bacon and Lucy Aframore, and I'll put a link to it in the video description. And this was published in... 2011, January 24th of 2011. So this has been around for a little while. Now, honestly, I can I can honestly get behind the approach of promoting health over over just telling people to lose weight. That's basically what I'm doing right now. You know, I got some I got some blood work done, and it turns out that I have high cholesterol and I'm pre-diabetic. Now, not that long ago, I was thinking, well, it's okay if I have this junk food as long as I'm losing weight. But now I realize that I can't really do that because the reason my cholesterol is high is from excessive consumptions of saturated fat. And then when I started looking at the junk food I was eating, I realized that, holy crap, I'm eating a lot of saturated fat, so I have to cut that out of my diet, which I've done. And, you know, I've done the yo-yo dieting thing in the past. I've lost a bunch of weight in the past, and then I've gained it all back. I've done that multiple times. This time around, I want my weight loss to be something that's permanent. And so what I'm focusing on is adopting a healthy lifestyle I can stick with. I lift weights three days a week, and I'm improving my diet. Now, I think that a healthy lifestyle will invariably lead to weight loss. If you have a healthy diet that emphasizes whole plant foods, it's going to be really hard to be obese. You're going to have to really try, and you're going to have to eat quite a lot of food 
because the food that you're going to be eating is going to be very bulky for the amount of calories you're getting. So, so yeah, I can actually get behind this approach, especially if there's actual data to show that promoting a healthy lifestyle over promoting just weight loss is actually effect, more effective at getting, at getting people to be healthier. Because what we really need to focus on is, is focus on like reducing the rates of heart disease and diabetes and all this stuff. These issues that are costing our society a lot of money. Now, something I wonder, something that, something that came up during my discovery of this paper is that if you look at the fat acceptance movement, they have a habit of just calling people fat phobes and then, you know, say blocking them on social media or telling their followers to go flag the person's social media account. But realistically, if science is on your side, then you should be able to um, just present the fucking science instead of resorting to attacks. Because calling me a fat phobe, you know, that's not going to change anything. If I think that I am correct, you're not going to change my opinion by calling me names. It just doesn't work like that. So, so I was really thankful that this fat acceptance person pointed me in the direction of this study. Now, I haven't gone through the entire study because I do have some, like, some reading issues. So, like, going through a whole big fat paper like this, you know, my brain just doesn't really want to do that. And also, the way this the way this paper is laid out, the authors make a bunch of claims and then they cite studies to back those claims up. So to really do this justice, you would have to look at the study, you'd have to go through and you'd have to look at the individual studies that they're citing to see if the claim is valid. So, so yeah, I, but just based on what's in the abstract and the basic idea of promoting a healthy lifestyle over weight loss, I can agree with that. Now, that said, like I said, I do think that a healthy lifestyle will invariably lead to weight loss because I've been of the opinion for a long time that obesity and a healthy diet are incompatible. And something that's really interesting that I've noticed with the fat acceptance movement, it seems like they love to talk about health at every size, but you don't really see people actually promoting this. You don't see these people actually promoting health. Like... If you look at their Instagram, for example, you look at their food posts, they're not posting pictures of healthy food. They're posting pictures of junk food. And they're promoting this message that, oh, if you want that donut, you can you know, go ahead and have it. Go ahead and eat that ice cream. Go ahead and eat that pizza, whatever. And if they were really, if these people actually cared about health, like they, they say they do, then they would be telling people to eat a healthy diet and to get exercise, but they don't. I mean, sure, you see somebody like Tess Holliday, you know, showing her videos working out, but she's not promoting health. I mean, she's got that video. There's that video where she's got that cake with a picture of herself and she's just diving right in and that's not healthy. And honestly, I think part of the reason you don't generally see these people actually promoting health is because their identity and their brand has been tied to their fatness. And I think that deep down inside, they know that if they really adopted a healthy lifestyle, it would result in them losing weight. And they can't handle that because they've made fat their identity and their brand. So that's why if you look at, for example, the Instagram of, say, Virgie Tovar, look at her food post. It's all junk food. I don't see, you don't see these people posting pictures of healthy food or talking, 
talking about how I just got a great workout, you know, except for like occasionally, like what Tess Holiday was showing where I'm working with this trainer, you know, but, but then you see these people who do post this stuff and they have to come back and say, but I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm really not. It's like, and it's just, it's all ridiculous. And so I kind of think that if we really want to promote the health at every size, if we really want to promote the health at every size approach, what we really need to do is divorce that from the fat acceptance movement. Because to me, the, the two seem incompatible. The other thing that I think would be really important is to change the fucking name. Because health at every size kind of implies that you can be healthy regardless of your size. And I just, I don't believe that's true. Because even if you are metabolically healthy, if you have too much weight on your body, you're just, it's going to impact, you know, your joints and your bones and everything. We're just not meant to carry that much weight. And like I, and like I keep saying, you know, if you adopt a healthy lifestyle, it will invariably lead to weight loss. So I, yeah, I really like the concept of promoting health over weight loss, but the name just, the name is really bad. And like, it's just confusing as to what that name actually means and what's being promoted, especially when you've got this in the hands of the fat acceptance movement that aren't actually promoting health. They just kind of go, oh, yeah, well, you can be obese and healthy, sure. And it's like, and they might cite some examples of so-and-so who works out and whatever. But you just don't see large numbers of the fat acceptance people promoting actual health. In fact, in fact, there was a post it was from one of these Instagram nutritionists that's jumping on the like intuitive eating fat acceptance bandwagon. And it was something about, I think, how somebody was complaining about how the recipes she was posting were all healthy. And it's like, well, they better be healthy. I mean, come on. And here's the thing. Now, I'm sure the fat acceptance folks will come back and say, oh, yeah, but it's okay to have, you know, junk food once in a while. And absolutely, you can certainly do that once in a while. The problem is for people who are morbidly obese, it's not once in a while. It's way too fucking much. That's how it was with me. You don't get fat off of eating whole plant foods. You just don't. You get morbidly obese by eating too much junk food. And so there are certain things that at least for the time being, I just have to cut them out of my diet. If I buy a pack of cookies and I have it in my house, it's going to be gone in short order. That's just reality. So I can't have those. And if I'm going to have those, I need to buy like a small individual pack and just have like a couple of cookies or something. So I think that's it for my rambling. More than anything, I wanted to point people in the direction of this study because I would love it if people who are more knowledgeable than me about this kind of stuff could actually look at the study and see if it has any validity. Like, I think it would be awesome if James from Shredded Sports Science actually looked at the study and actually broke it down because this guy really knows his stuff and he's certainly going to be a lot more qualified to look at studies than somebody like me. And, uh, and yeah, just to reiterate for all you fat acceptance folks who might be watching, if you want to change people's minds, you need to come by, come back with facts and logic. Just calling people names is not going to do it. You can call me fat phobe all you want. You're not going to change my opinion. My opinion is being changed because somebody provided me with actual with an with a fucking paper, you know, and this paper contains stuff that actually makes some sense and that I'm actually thinking about. So yeah, keep that in mind next time you try to argue with somebody who is opposed to what you are promoting. 
and and I will see you all later. Please follow me on social media and all that. That will be in the video description. And I will put a link to this study in the video description so people can find it. And uh, comments are open. So please uh, let me know what you think.